So to tell us all about moving from Manhattan to Matraville, please welcome Joel Mears. I'm going to start with a bit of a confession uh, after the last section. I don't know anything about technology. It scares the shit out of me. And it's not that I expect this to happen. I'm just really bad with it. So I'm going to tell a quick personal story about failure instead. And my story about failure begins, as some do, with Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> because it was from about the age of seven years old when I first saw this movie, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, that I really developed this urge to move to New York City. And it's an urge that stayed with me right through to adulthood. And I think it's an urge that many people in this room might have shared at some point. <laughs> we all want to wake up in a city that never sleeps and play in the concrete jungle where dreams are made of. And as, a journal, huh? <laughs> and as a journalist in my young 20s, it held a really strong appeal because it was the home of the New York Times and Vanity Fair and The New Yorker. And so in 2009, I actually up and left and enrolled in a journalism degree at Columbia University and told everyone I would never come back. Ah, fool. Uh, it was great when I got there. I was learning to write from great people at the Times and meeting wonderful people in my classes and eating tons of bagels. I fell in love in New York. He's in the crowd tonight. Um, <laughs> I actually moved into the strange street that Macaulay Culkin ends up in on Home Alone 2. <laughs> but two years after moving to New York, I was actually back in Sydney for good. <laughs> oh, and this is, this is the sad part of my story, the boo-hoo part, the failure part, albeit a very first world kind of failure. Um, the part where I come back to Sydney with an American university sized debt on my shoulders, no job, and I'm forced to live with my mother at the age of 26 in Matraville. <laughs> now, if you don't know Matraville, it's just south of here, and I grew up there, and I love it to death, but it could fairly be described as dull. You get in a taxi, tell them you're going to Matraville, they might balk, for example. <laughs> the Sydney Morning Herald describes it as working class. It's the opposite of Manhattan. So coming from Manhattan to Matraville, I became a bit of a poster child for personal failure. Two years after I came back, people still say to me, what the fuck were you thinking coming back to Matraville? Um, and I just tell them, I to paraphrase Sinatra, I couldn't make it there, so I'm going to, you know, try and make it here. But what I didn't tell you earlier was this has a happy ending, because the failure that I experienced in, uh, in Manhattan and coming back is the kind of failure that I really reckon you should embrace, because it's the kind of failure that you learn from. And in New York, I learned that New York wasn't all about this. It wasn't all dancing people on rooftops and FAO Schwartz and pigeon ladies in the park, and it wasn't all great journalists and great magazines that I wanted to work at. In fact, New York can be pretty frickin' cold. And the wages can be pretty frickin' low, and the rents can be pretty frickin' high. And there are more unpaid internships being, uh, you know, gone after by journalists in their late 20s in New York than there are, well, I guess in Sydney. Uh, I'm in the meat here in Bitter. Uh, no, but, and while I met amazing people in my classes at Columbia, there was the guy who went on to start a division of Facebook, and another guy is actually reporting from Iraq for Time magazine. They could all be a bit much sometimes. You know when you get all the ambitious people in one room? Not like tonight, but you have to put up with all the other ambitious people. <laughs> Imagine if everyone in your high school was Tracy Flick and you get the idea. I started to dream of normal things like plumbers and shops that close at 5 p.m. and RSLs that have old people on the lawn bowls patch, not just hipsters. <laughs> I actually realized that I loved Matraville by going to Manhattan. I loved it so much I actually dragged my partner from Manhattan to here. When taxi drivers balk, I tell them that Bob Carr grew up in Matraville. When I'm schmoozing as, as the editor of a magazine, I'm talking about the wonderful 24-hour pie shop on Bunurong Road. Which is all a long way of saying that it actually took going to Manhattan to realize that the place I wanted to be all my life was not necessarily the place I wanted to be right now. And that may sound a bit kumbaya and a bit like the ending of a Home Alone film, but it was a bit of an important lesson for me. Because while it was important for me to pursue my dreams, I also had to recognize that dreams are fluid, they change, and you need to know when you're pursuing a dream you might have woken up from. And waking up is not always failing. You might recognize some of the themes of this speech from a speech that J.K. Rowling gave to Harvard in 2008. She said to them, failure gave me an inner strength that I never attained through passing examinations. Failure taught me things about myself that I could learn no other way. That's J.K. Rowling. She went on to uh, write Harry Potter and make millions of dollars. And I went on to be unemployed and live with my mother in Matraville in a bedroom where the door didn't close because there was a fish tank in the way. So our stories are different, but the message is somewhat similar. 
I would go further, though. Don't just acknowledge your failure and say, sure, I failed and I learned from it. Embrace it. Redefine it. You didn't fail your driver's test. You tried to pass it. I tried to, I tried to make it in America, and I learned a lot from having tried. A good friend of mine is actually moving to New York next week. And he's really smart, he's a great writer, and he wants to write about all the wonderful things happening on Broadway. And I don't think he's going to fail, and I don't think there's any chance he will. But if he does, I really hope he learns a lot through having tried.